You're listening to The Bob and Bo Show. Here are your hosts, Ty Bob and Ty Bo. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm one of your hosts, Ty Bob. You can I, I screwed it up last week. I'm not going to do it this week. My name is Ty Bob. You can follow me on Twitter at Ty underscore Bob underscore. We're joined by Ty Bo. Uh, make sure to follow him and the show at Bob in Bo Show. Make sure that you check out Sean Wilson's Twitter at Sheen1440. I, I remembered it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's ride. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna be uh, doing that all year especially with how bad they look man it was, it was awful but we're not here to talk about how bad the broncos were on monday night we're here to talk about a big old fat dub from the chiefs who ended up winning against the cardinals in phoenix where we will end the season in the super bowl 44 to 21 boys what a hell of a game we look the best. We look the best. Just wow. Undoubtedly looked the best team in the <clears throat> NFL. You obviously had the Thursday night game where both teams looked poor. Uh, the Bengals obviously looked poor throughout the week. I think it's safe to say that the Kansas City Chiefs were undoubtedly the best team in the league through week one. We were ready. Week one, we were ready. There's a lot of teams out there that were not ready week one. A couple of Super Bowl hangovers out there, but the Chiefs, you know, got playing time for the guys that needed it in the preseason and we look ready. Um, can't say that for the rest of the league. Yeah. Everyone looks excited to be there. They're ready to go. They're ready to hit on defense. Offense is just humming along right now. Our defense was flying. I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to say it was the best performance in the world, but our defense was flying around. Everybody looked fast, healthy, Um, before we get too far into the breakdown, we definitely need to talk about the injury report. We came out with quite a few injuries. Number one being Trent McDuffie. Uh, he's being placed on the IR. He is out for a minimum of four weeks. Um, they did keep the changes to, uh, the, the IR, the injury reserve, um, through the pandemic. I think I, I I really like that much better. I think the old way was a minimum of six weeks and you had your eight weeks, now you've got the four to eight week window. If they're not ready to be activated off the IR after or by eight weeks, they are not allowed to come back on the team for the year. They go on the IR. Um, so so he meets that right now. It's possible he doesn't come back until after the bye week. It'd be really hurtful for, for a young rookie. Uh, we also had a few light practices uh, from players on Monday. Now going into Tuesday, they were a mix between light practice and full practice. Orlando Brown. Who else am I missing, Tybo? Trey Smith. Trey Smith was another big one. <laughs> Butker's uh, day-to-day, um, but we still brought in um, another kicker. W- I mean, yes, we did. He ne- he is on the practice squad. I'm assuming that they're probably going to leave him there just for the fact that we do have Justin Reed and don't need to waste a roster spot. Um, the time will tell. Um, do, do you have designations for practices for Trey Smith or for um, Orlando Brown on to- today, Tuesday's practice? I've, I've been looking, but I swear I scrolled past something on Twitter and I've scrolled so much that it's probably impossible for me to find, but Not sure. no um, worries. I, I think I'm pretty sure Trey Smith and Orlando Brown practice today. Yes, I did see Orlando. That sure. Orlando was full. Trey was limited. Nice. Nice. That's good to see, especially if it's a regular week, your early practice designations aren't necessarily a worry, but given You've got from Monday to Thursday or Monday to Wednesday to be ready. Um, that can be a little scary, even even for early week designations. Um, quickly, and I run. think go ahead. I think Trey Smith is is better than Orlando Brown, but or losing Orlando Brown is scarier than losing Trey Smith because of who we have to back him up. Yeah, um, it's an if iffy situation on the left side, uh, especially which the who we got coming up. We know Tooney is serviceable for about a game or so, but realistically, that's not a guy that you want there full time. Um, Before we move too far in, we do have some more designations outside of the injury list. Uh, We do have a couple squad uh, practice squad activated players, uh, linebacker Jack Cochran 
and homegrown linebacker Elijah Lee. It's good to see that guy get back <clears throat> on the field. He will be a big time special teams player and potentially be able to get some playing time in at the end of games. We knew that he was going to come back with Blake Bell uh, going on the IR for the season uh, due to injury. Um, so it is good to actually see him come back. We do also have some practice squad players that were signed. The kicker that Ty Bo was talking about, Matt Amendola. We also brought back cornerback DiCaprio Boodle. What a fantastic name. And <laughs> wide receiver Corey that was Cole. A, he sticks around. Hey, he's been around for quite a few years. I think for uh, this is year three now. So yeah. hey, he's he's good enough to stick on a roster somewhere. Uh, and then lastly, lastly, like I said, we did uh, uh, bring uh, wide receiver Corey Coleman back. Um, potentially we'll need him later on in the season for his special teams abilities. And then we did release uh, safety James Wiggins. A lot of people were really happy to have him on the practice squad. I believe he's out of KU. Um, uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, but I, I do remember a lot of people talking about him when he was designated to the practice squad. Um, so we, we lost one player. We brought in quite a few. Uh, with that said, boys, what was your favorite part about being able, obviously, besides like having football on, the NFL is back, the Chiefs are back and winning a game. What was your favorite part of the Chiefs game uh, uh, against the Cardinals? I think mine was uh, the return of Petty Mahomes. Right there, five touchdowns. <clears throat> Looking over at the sideline for the Cardinals to his old college coach, Cliff Kingsbury. Saying, you can't stop me. What are you going to do, man? Just love seeing that whenever Patrick is petty. Nothing better than that. I was about to say the same thing. I was about to, I was about to say Pat's attitude. Um, but the other thing uh, I enjoyed seeing was guys like Nick Bolton, Willie Gay, Juan Thornhill, uh, and the way they were fr- flying around on defense, kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Um, they look fast. Um, and you know, we got cut up at times, but you know, that's kind of how it goes for Chiefs defense. Um, we have young DBs, um, and some guys that haven't been here for a little bit, but like Juan Thornhill, uh, Willie Gay, Chris Jones, Nick Bolton, all those guys look great. Frank, Frank Clark flashed, you know, that's kind of what he does. He shows, um, you know, a couple of big things here and there. Carlos Dunlap got a sack. That was nice to see. Um, um, and our the way we were blitzing um, the DBs, Legereus Le- Sneed had a sack where he was, like, hiding behind a linebacker or a, a lineman. Kyler didn't even see him coming. And I he almost uh, had an illegal tackle there, but it was a it was a nice sack. We uh, Kyler didn't know what was coming. So, Do you think that's due to Kyler being far too short for his position? Definitely. That's partially that has that has a lot to do with it. Um, there, but he just also didn't look like he knew what was going on sometimes. So there were also a lot of times Kyler had open wide receivers and he just not would not pass to them because he could not see over the line to his right side. He had to but, go left and screw up the pass. That was a big thing um with him coming into the league and then um but even watching him at Oklahoma, that was still a thing. You it, it went from Baker to Kyler and so the offense morphed well but you could always tell that we were rolling outside left and right and scrambling through the pocket doing broken plays to make sure that he had visibility going there Um, and in the NFL it's a totally different game everybody's much bigger stronger and faster you don't have as much time uh, for the separation uh, to get where you need to go Um, I think my favorite part of the Chiefs game was the rookies being able to watch the likes of Pacheco get 12 carries, being able to see Carl Loftus. I've seen six, I've seen five. I don't know what it was because Tybo and I both feel like the, the rules for pressures has been moved around the line quite often, but to know that he's been in the backfield five to six times and creating a little bit of havoc and also staying contained is really, really important being able to see that happen. But most importantly, being able to watch the young rookies like uh, Jalen Watson and Josh Williams, Uh, go in and be able to make plays, which obviously Josh uh, Williams is is going to be a big portion of this Chiefs defense going into the next four to six weeks, uh, given that Trent McDuffie is going to be out. Yeah, that's going to be concerning going forward. Um, We're we're lucky that Keenan Allen's probably not going to play. 
Um, but for losing him for as long as we might, um, I don't think that was expected. Um, but it's unfortunate. Um, it's gonna give it's gonna give the other rookies, you know, plenty of time to get up to speed. You know, Trent McDuffie is is was far and away, um, you know, probably there's some competition with Legarius Need, but I feel like it's it's a fair or an arguable statement to say that he was the best corner on the field, you know, throughout the whole preseason and the snaps that he was on the field, he wasn't getting thrown at. Like, you know, that has a that says, you know, how good he's covering these wide receivers. You know, as a rookie, it says a lot. Um, but you know, we saw it in in training camp when we went. Like he was blanketing people. And if he wasn't if he wasn't winning the rep, he was always in the right position. He was always making it difficult for the wide receiver to catch the ball so he it's going to be unfortunate if he's out for a while um so that's something to watch i agree that you know you didn't hear his name called much in that first half before he went down and that's something that you always want to hear is not somebody's name on defense unless they're making a big play um sean you talked about petty pat and i think one of the cool things about petty pat coming out in week one is he had five touchdown passes. Everybody knows this. But he is now tied for fourth place for the most games with five-plus touchdown passes. Uh, the num- the people coming in front of him, Drew Brees is locked away number one at 11. You've got Brady and Manning tied at nine. And then you've got uh, Roethlisberger, Dan Marino, and Patrick Mahomes tied with six. The underlying theme here is that nobody above Patrick Mahomes – has played less than 242 games to get to the number that they're at. Well, Patrick Mahomes has only played 64. It's a literally mind blowing stat because he's going to shatter like whatever record is set with that. You know, there's no way his his career stops at 11 games, you know, part of that is due to the rule change, but, that just shows you how much of an immense talent he is. Sean, you were saying, what what was the ratio on the touchdown to games for that? Basically, just a little under 11 games. So he's going to get this once a year, no matter what, basically, is what we're seeing here right now. A, a five-touchdown game every 11 games. Yep. That's ridiculous. That's, <laughs> that's, that is, that's not human. That's beyond elite. Like, that's not human. And we regardless got, we got, of what trash metric someone really wants to post on Twitter, I'm not going to say him because I'm not going to give him their credit. I've already said this before, show. Like, Pat had the best stats. He had the most yards. He had the most touchdowns. And he didn't throw any picks. Like, it, 77 completion percentage, like 30 for 39. Like, that's insane. Nine misses on, on 39, 40 attempts. Like, come on. It's not human. Nobody's Straight touching terminated. that. Like you, you know, fantasy points aren't isn't like the best metric to say who's the best, but he's number one in you know fantasy points for quarterbacks right now. Like it's Pat's. We're lucky to have it. <laughs> <laughs> Another really cool stat that comes out from this week is, uh, I, and I love to check this every week. They always combine them all. It. Uh, it it's, it is put out by the company that we don't want to talk about who gets the NFL money for really bad, uh, really good raw analytical data, but really bad rankings and gradings. Um, they do put out fantastic raw analytical data uh, when they don't try to put opinions into it. And one of the things that they always put out is conversions on downs. And one thing that's been an underlying theme throughout the last few years is the Chiefs are number one, are anywhere from three to one in this category for the entire season since Patrick Mahomes has become the starter in Kansas City. We've converted first downs on first down 31% of the time in week one. We converted a first down on second down 72% of the time. We converted a first down on third down 86% 86% of the time. And That's insane. 86% on third down. That's ridiculous. Here's the the craziest part of all of it. Num- number one, second down beats. Our second down conversion rate is 72%. Beats anybody on this list by nearly 10%. <laughs> Are we That's talking insane. Just, just week one, though? Just week one. We come out hot. You see all the teams that came out flat. Rams came out flat. Bengals came out flat. So many teams came out flat. Broncos came out flat. 
the Chiefs, when they have time to p- prepare, when Andy Reid has time to prepare a team, you know, they come out hot. After a bye week, they come out hot. Week one, when they've had all the time in the offseason to get s- stuff into place, they come out hot. Number two on that, the Kansas City Chiefs completed a first down on a fourth down attempt 89% of the time. Jesus. 89% of the time. Probably a much smaller sample size than the rest of them, but I want to give I want to give the go? league I'll give you the league average on this. Teams in the NFL completed a first down on first down 23% of the times. Kansas City Chief 31. League average on second downs 48%. Kansas City Chiefs, 72. League average on third down conversions, 69%. Chiefs were 86. Fourth down conversions, league average, 71%. Chiefs, 89. Leaps and bounds better than everybody else. Because Patrick Mahomes isn't average. (laughs) (laughs) Our offense isn't average. (laughs) I think that goes to show, but like, and, and this is the thing that everybody continues to harp on and talk about. It's not just Patrick Mahomes. It's also the playmaking or play calling abilities of the staff, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, and being able to have a quarterbacks coach like Matt Nagy, who's worked with Patrick before, who helped Patrick get that 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns with like nine interceptions his rookie season. It's the coaching staff that, that, the, that Clark Hunt, the ownership group, and, and Andy always brings in. Um, for so the guys that constructed the offensive line when they identified a problem, you know, 100%. 100%. I, d- I don't think there's a doubt in my mind a- at this point. I still am going to go with my 12 games that I put out there uh, just because the NFL is what it is. But honestly, we could be seeing a resurgence of uh, of an offense like we saw in 2018 when uh, Kansas City took on the Rams and lost that game by one score, but they were both teams scored yeah, over 60. Yeah, a field goal. 60, no. 61 to 50. 59. Yeah. 54, 51. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> but that also goes to show, like, there, there's also something to say about this Kansas City Chiefs defense, that we only allowed a team uh, like the Cardinals with Kyler Murray, even with D-Hop out, they still had James Conner. They still had Rondell Moore. They still had A.J. Green, guys who were putting mm, they didn't numbers. Have, they didn't have Rondell Moore. Didn't they have were actually Moore. pretty – they were actually pretty depleted. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're, you're – you're You still have facts. playmakers on – you yeah. still have playmakers on that side of the ball. Like, guys who – a guy who just got, four, what, 40, 30, $40 million in a, in a contract right before the season started. Like, they've got guys who can go out and make plays – De- no matter how depleted they are and the defense still went out and only allowed seven points through nearly three quarters. So that means that the rest of their 14 points came in garbage time when it really didn't matter. And that's with a bunch of rookies on the defensive side of the ball. Talk to me a little bit about that, Sean, and what you saw through the chiefs defensive play. Uh, one big thing I saw right away was after they scored that touchdown, Arizona went on five drives in a row where they had five plays or less. So we were getting after them right away, not giving them any chances to really put it up an offense for anything. Uh, Nick Bolden looked amazing out there. Ten tackles, nine solo, one tackle for loss. I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing from him. He's really coming into his role as a leader right there. And just everybody right there, they were swarming to the ball. They were quick to where the ball was going to be. They were just ready to go. Uh, Defensive line was always right there. Carlotta's almost got a sack early on. But Kyler had to throw it away really quick on a, I believe it was a quick screen pass. Carlos was right there going to get him. So love seeing that from him. It gave him a lot of snaps. I feel like he you know, played. It's, it's it's good for him. He played the second most defensive snaps, I believe, with uh, fifty one. That's good. which is absolutely that's absolutely needed. That's one thing that we talked about during the season or during the preseason. Tybo, you and I were talking about how he was going to get about fifty percent of the snaps. Uh, defensively, you know, making sure that he was in there getting his reps. When you get a game like this, there's no point at all to not continue to keep him in the game and get that NFL exposure and experience that will push him through and maybe a little bit faster towards the end of the season. 
I mean, I I'm gonna be honest. Like I I was the one kind of questioning it. I didn't know if he was gonna be getting as many snaps, but we'll we'll see how it goes with better teams, better offensive lines. Sure. Um, like Cardinals are good, but like I, their their defense. You know, if JJ Watt isn't healthy, their defense doesn't really have a whole lot of playmakers. Um, I feel like they they might be a lower tier team in the NFC this year. Give me your uh, obviously we've got Nick Bolton, Carl Loftus, um, uh, Chris Jones, uh, who were unsung heroes of the game. Like no no question about it, played fantastic. Uh, the statistics and watching the film will tell you how great they played. Uh, give me your underdog heroes of the game on the defensive side, um, and and maybe a little bit to why that is. For me specifically, um, I would have to say for like one guy that nobody really talked about was Juan Thornhill. He was out there on the field a ton. He was he was stuck to guys' hips. He was covering areas. Kyler, one of the reasons why Kyler was so poor in that game on Sunday was specifically because of his play, giving different reads and not being able to get a, a, a good look on the hat of either of the safeties, but most specifically him and his role, being able to roam around a little bit and be able to put a hip on guys um, uh, and throw a little mix that way. I think for me, uh, defensively, Juan Thornhill has to be uh, uh, an unnoticed hero of that game with the things that will not show up on the stat sheet. I think we're shaking our heads because we were probably going to say the same thing. Like one Thornhill, <laughs> uh, you know, with with all the changes and all the people that we brought into the offseason, he's one of those guys that gets lost. Um, but somebody else that's a veteran that's been here that I feel like held it down, especially when McDuffie went out and, and like he was tackling great um, LJ, bro. Legereus Sneed got a sack because of a per a well designed play. Um, you know, LJ was was holding it down out there, making tackles, and, you know, he wasn't usually the guy that was getting burnt um when when they were cutting us up. Yeah. Uh same with Juan Thornhill. I thought he almost had one of the sickest interceptions I have ever seen along the sideline. He shot over there like a, a cannon. Almost. He was <laughs> ready for that almost man. He was so close. He's right there. He's shooting for it this year. I love seeing that. Uh, the hype man, Willie Gay. Love seeing him out there. Even if he's not involved with everything, he's always right there hyping everybody up, getting everybody ready to go. Love seeing that combination with him and Nick Bolden right there now. Like I said uh, before the season, we have we have one of the best linebacking pairs, if not the best linebacking pair in the NFL. Yeah, I 100% agree. And and I think there's one more person there between the three of us. If we had a fourth, I think they would say it. Mike Dana. Mike Dana, five, six pressures <laughs> as a guy coming in in his third year, a rotational piece at that, and being able to put in the work that, that he put in in that game. Um, it, it is clear and evident to see that the work that he's been putting in over the last couple of years and in this off season, he's ready to take a starting role away from, from, from Frank Clark. Uh, I, I don't think there's any question about it. Um, it, it's, it's been kind of wishy-washy the last few years. He's had some good games. He's had some bad games. He's been unrecognizable and the face, uh, or one of the faces of the defensive line that's been awful, um, if we continue to play this way, I'll, I'll do a hot take. If we continue to play this way, this defensive line will go from the 29th ranked defensive line to a top five by week 18. Top five, top five, top That's real five, high. top five. I, I like think that. I obviously a lot of things have to go our way with injuries and whatnot, but I'll say it right here at the end of the season, the Kansas city chiefs will have a top five defensive line. If that happens, we're winning the Super Bowl, like yeah. hands down. No question. No question about it. I don't want to like we we look like the most complete team. And like I was also saying before the season that I didn't think our defense was going to be anything special. So um we'll we'll definitely the short week chargers is gonna test us. And I'm I'm definitely I'm jittery. Like I I've I've got the nerves <laughs> talking about it a little bit, but you know, I'm excited. Let's flip the script a little bit. 
to the opponents that we played. Um, they, they've got to be talked about just in short. Um, but you had Kyler Murray goes 22 for 34, 193 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and honestly only sacked two times. Um, didn't didn't play all that well. You had a guy who had been um, in, in the backfield who had been, you know, almost beat over the or, or to beat a dead horse like people were calling James Connor to be like that guy coming out of Pittsburgh uh and, and playing for them last year and and having to share the backfield last year with Chase Edmonds and like okay this is his year you know you you've got a guy like D Hop that's out and so they bring in uh Marquise Brown uh 4 for 43 and James Connor went 10 for 10 attempts for 26 like what about this offense should be worrisome coming up through the rest of the season what should other teams be worried about from this offense and uh what are like some things that they need to nail and get down to change the way that uh to change so that they can actually make something good out of their season because obviously all of us agree that we believe the cardinals are going to be very piss poor until they at least get d hop back what are some things that they need to do uh to maybe uh become a little bit better in fans eyes well, the other teams need to worry about them getting healthy, for one. Zach Ertz didn't play. He did uh, play. Jay... Oh, he did play? He did. Well... Two catches for 14 yards. Okay. And a Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so we've got a touchdown. But, okay, J.J. Watt <laughs> didn't play. A left guard didn't play. A starting left guard didn't play. Uh, Rondell Moore didn't play. Um, and, you know, D-Hop's gone till week six. So, when everybody's healthy and everybody's back, like, you know, maybe they have a more intimidating offense because Hollywood Brown opposite D hop with Rondale Moore, also an option at Zach Ertz, a tight end. That's a pretty good offense. You know, if Kyler is who he, who he's paid to be, um, that offense should be scary, but they, they didn't look it uh, on Sunday. I didn't like hearing the name Greg Dorch all day. <laughs> What a name. catches on nine targets like that name should just rub me the wrong way all day but and whoever and Kyler, I, whoever the the commentators were kept saying his name like yeah this guy's gonna be something this year like yeah i've never heard of this guy <laughs> in <laughs> our entire lives um it, it, it's pretty piss poor i think one of the things a lot of people are going to miss over this week that they talk about is is how poor the actual actual coaching staff was like, yes, we can pin this on, on Kyler. We can pin it on James Conner. We can pin it on whoever we want as players. And as much as we want to give flack to Kyler Murray for playing too much call of duty and not studying enough and not being ready in these games, uh, like uh, w- what the hell is that coaching staff doing? Were they also playing call of duty with Kyler Murray? Like they did not prepare that team. Well, no, it was it was strange to see a week a, a week one where like everybody looked flat, like Cardinals are kind of lumped into a group of a lot of teams that didn't really play well this weekend. You know, coaching staffs I guess across the league <laughs> needed some more time to figure stuff out. And I mean, with Arizona having Vance Joseph as its defensive coordinator, they. Vance Joseph does not know how to play against Patrick Mahomes. If you remember his days back in Denver, whenever Patrick first came in. The league, I was like, just... why does that name sound so familiar? <laughs> That's fair. That's totally fair. Boys, Man, before... another, another thing I wanted to rag on the Cardinals for, uh, they named Isaiah Simmons their signal caller on defense <laughs> uh, this season, and we made him look like a little leaguer. He, <laughs> he was getting turned around every which way. Um, we had a play where we specifically got Juju one-on-one with Isaiah Simmons. He made him look bad. Travis Kelsey was making him look bad all game. Uh, Isaiah Simmons did not have a good game. Um, I hope for his sake that he can bounce back from this terrible week one. <laughs> yeah, that was it was not good. And honestly, he had a good good year last year. He's a local homegrown boy out of Lenexa, Kansas. Um Oops. So it, it kind of sucks. <laughs> it it, it kind of sucks to see like a homegrown talent go somewhere else who clearly is really good, um, but struggle like that. 
it wasn't that he just struggled um, against like the whole team. It started from snap one when Travis Kelsey is turning this man inside out. He doesn't know <laughs> up from down, left from right. He's got his right shoe on his left foot and his left shoe on his right foot. Like it, he didn't know which way to turn or how to leave the facility. I, I truly think that that man was stuck inside that locker room somewhere trying to figure out where the hell the exit door was when the game was over. <laughs> Before we touch on uh, on a note to land this plane, um, is there anything else that you boys wanted to cover from this weekend that I may have missed? Uh, I think um, something you may have mentioned to me the day of the game, um, Sky Moore looked good when he had the ball in his hands. Really good. Um, and he – you know, he's probably not going to have consistent production in this offense, but hey, give him, you know, one or two, maybe even three big weeks this year where Pat finds him for a couple touchdowns or something like that because he looked really good with the ball in his hands. It, it was something that I had touched on. We, it, I, I smoked a brisket and Tybo came over with a couple other friends and, and family members and we enjoyed a good day of week one. The one thing I had mentioned was his vision and ability when he, when he had the ball in his hands. And that didn't just go from – I mean, number one, his route running was very crisp. He was able to get separation and move. But you put the ball in his hands, and the guy was able to find space when there was none. Uh, I remember uh, one of the more specific plays. It was towards the end of the game, I believe, uh, in the fourth quarter. It was uh, – I think it ended up being like a 20 – uh, four yard play uh, the route comes across the field he catches it which surprisingly a rookie uh, with his smaller stature is willing to run across the field and be able to find the space not to get hit but to continue upfield reminds me a lot of how Travis Kelsey is able to work within that intermingling area but comes across the field catches it and turns upfield and ends up running through four separate Cardinals defenders with barely a fingertip on him before uh, before multiple were able to take him down after about a 24-yard gain. And that goes to speak for his, his special team's ability as well. And that's one guy like uh, uh, Pacheco was able to uh, take a couple returns uh, from the kickoff back, I, I think a good 30 yards or so. Uh, Sky Moore was able to do that on on punt returns and his ability and vision to be able to turn up field and find space when there is none. That's going to be a huge huge aspect of this chiefs team that a lot of people are not going to be able to not going to talk about. That's going to put Pat in, in great field position and maybe not get 300 yards every week because sky Moore is putting them near the 50 every single time. One more thing before we get, Oh, go ahead. Uh, the only other thing I had for it was it was 37 to seven in the third quarter. And if you weren't in market, CBS change it to a more competitive game. <laughs> Which Wait, I don't know if there at, were at, any. At that the, happened. Like at the start of the fourth quarter, basically? No, in the yes. third quarter, they changed the In the, the game. third quarter. Yes. I, I did Man, see that on Arizona, Twitter. A lot of people were upset. Just spanked you. Like, sent you home crying. <laughs> like, left you home crying. Also, Jody Fortson, TD, so, red zone target. Get him, get him 20 touchdowns this year. Just like 20 catches, 20 touchdowns. That'd be dope. <laughs> I'd like that. That'd be a dope stat. <laughs> every touch, every every touch is a touchdown. That'd be sick. His, but he's so he's six for six on catches, and like uh, a decent percentage of them are touchdowns. Three or four yeah. touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's wild. Four season in full effect. <laughs> Before we get out of here, boys, there's one thing that uh, that we do need to speak about. What are some things that you took away from week one that we definitely need to work on moving forward through the rest of the season? Uh, the one big thing I saw was we had five fumbles. We only lost one, but we still had five fumbles during that game. Whoa, I did not notice five. We had a ton yeah. of fumbles. A lot of balls on the ground. Uh, it was sloppy. Again, it's I week guess one. Juju lost that happens a lot. But... Yeah. Uh, he lost one out of bounds, but then he lost one in bounds. He had mm -hmm. that big catch over the middle. Uh, it, uh, honestly, I, we can't be mad at that play like that. Sometimes defensive players just make really good defensive plays. It's, it's yeah. a shocker, I know. Uh, but like the, the play on the ball by that defender, I don't know who it was, but the, it was just a spectacular play. You can't be mad yeah. at that. 
But yes, that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, my, I guess, concern slash hope going forward for the season is that the coaching staff sticks with and establishes the run game. Um, we ran the ball 40% of the plays uh, this game, but a lot of that was Pacheco and garbage time. Um, so I'm hoping that we at least run the ball a third of our of our plays. You know, I'm a minimum 33% to 40% of the time. Let's run the ball. Let's well, get it established. That's what? What are you laughing about? The only problem with that was that we had one drive over 10 plays. Everything else was seven, eight plays or less. So I mean, we're, we're but, just way too but efficient with it. It's let's we just gotta we gotta rock with it if it's not necessarily working with us right away. Like, yeah, you know these the the line wants to eat. They want let the boys eat. They want the run block. Let's do it. I'm gonna go along with that sentiment at the running backs, not necessarily the run game, but I want to continue seeing Pat and Andy call these plays, but Pat throwing to the running backs. Mm -hmm. Clyde had three receptions on three targets for 32 yards. And uh, Jarek McKinnon had four targets, two. three receptions. Yes. Two touchdowns. Uh, uh, Jarek McKinnon had four targets, three receptions, 27 yards. More of that, more of that. We brought both of these guys in to catch balls out of the backfield. That's something that needs to continue to happen to bring a little bit of dynamic ability, not just to the run game that Tybo was speaking about, but that that adds that versatility to open up the likes of Juju and continue to open up the likes of Travis, who was supposed to be triple and double and triple covered by every team here on out. And that's just not going to continue to happen as long as we continue to throw the ball. And with losing Tyreek, that opened up nearly 200, uh, over 200 passing attempts. So there's a, there's a lot of people out there. Hey, when there's, when up. there's like 10, 11, 12 miles to feed, not everybody's going <laughs> to <eat>, like, <laughs> but, but everybody's going to eat. We just had, he just, Patrick Mahomes completed passes to nine players and he attempted to 10. And the only reason the 10th didn't get one is because Justin Watson had to leave the game due to an injury. <laughs> he attempted nine to, or he completed passes to nine players and attempted passes to 10. That's ridiculous. Everybody's going to eat. Everybody gets a bag. Well, I mean, we'll see how it comes, you know, with the better teams because that defense yeah. is nothing to. We're going to have a really new player score this week instead of a player that we've had for a few years. Yeah. It'll be a running it'll be a running back by committee and receiver by committee for sure, but it is beautiful to see. Well, if there's nothing else, boys, we thank you all for joining us. Stay tuned. This episode is coming at you on Wednesday. The next episode will come at you on Thursday, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Uh, make sure you stay tuned in because the Kansas City Chiefs go into Arrowhead or stay at home in Arrowhead taking on the Los Angeles Chargers and Justin Herbert on the very first Amazon-only Prime game. It's going to be a beautiful one. Stick around. We'll have that out. Make sure to check out our YouTube Bob and Bo show. And as always, go Chiefs. Go Chiefs.